Good morning, everyone. Jeff in Raleigh, your Toyota resource. How does the 4Runner do in bad conditions when it's raining, when it's windy outside? It's been raining for about two or three days here in Raleigh, so we're going to see how it does on a little bit slicker roads, those type of conditions. Point being, I'm going to go for a test drive, give my impressions, and you tell me if your impressions match mine. Sounds like a fun quarantine game. Yes! Let's do first things first. That always seems logical. So 4Runner comes with two rows of seating here. This is the off-road, not the off-road premium. So it has cloth interior. If you get the premium, it'll have the soft tech. So it has two rows, spacious, lots of leg room, lots of headroom. And then it does not have an option for a third row of seating. You can either get the sliding rear cargo deck, which I think is extremely handy and useful in situations where you want to tailgate or you want to do work out there or just lay your stuff out, maybe sit on it watching the fireworks of your kid's game, or it could be empty just like this one here. It also has a grounded 120 volt outlet. Another nice benefit is that you can lay in this model the seats down flat, just like that. The seat bottom folds up. It's almost a 100% surface there and it frees up extra room. You still have a great amount of room also with the sliding rear cargo deck. It's pretty flat just as well. Here's a little Jeff Pearl of wisdom is if you want to look out the back window and you want more visibility with the headrest up, it's a little bit tougher. You can also fold it down, which is a little bit better, but still a little bit challenging. You can also pull that, push that in and take the sucker right off. So now you have total visibility if you don't have backseat passengers who need the headrest. That's what I'm gonna do today. Whoa! Woo One of the things you may wanna determine, first of all, before you even do any type of test driving is, what type of off-road premium do you want? Darn it, it's getting windy. Um, the off-road right here uses a traditional key, off-road premium uses a smart key, so you don't have to actually hit this, you just walk up to it with a premium, and it automatically would unlock. This is not the premium. It also comes with a power passenger seat, navigation, soft tech seating, those type of a thing. The first thing I want to show you is the visibility here. It has a huge front windshield. I took off all of the headrests, including the passenger one. Why not get an unobstructed view to the back? We took off all three headrests in the back. That's my little tip. I hope that helps. Let's start her up and see how we do. Let's roll. This has such a wide windshield that it almost reminds me of the FJ Cruiser, which has the world's biggest front windshield. Remember, that one has three different wipers on it, which is crazy but that's what it's got. So I love the visibility in this one. This is one reason why if you're concerned about safety, I would choose a 4Runner just for the sheer window space. You could see everything that might possibly be an obstacle or danger. Initial impressions are that this vehicle has a very smooth glide to it. Yes, you feel like you're in a truck. That's one of the philosophical differences between a 4Runner truck and a Highlander car like but it's very smooth and I like how you sit up very high so that way especially if there's a car in front of you you won't feel like traffic is stopping you from seeing what's going on ahead um, the other thing is it has a very soft accelerator it has a very soft brake compared to say like a Honda it doesn't break too hard it's nice and I guess you could say it eases you in as you accelerate and also as you stop. This is so nice. There's also a great amount of space in the front interior cabin. It's very wide, very expansive. And I do appreciate this upgraded eight inch touchscreen here. It plays Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Amazon Alexa, it gives you just about everything that you would need. You can also play Google Maps, the iPhone Maps, also Waze, that's the one I use. I love it, real time, everything. Um, there is a digital display right here. I'll show you that in just a minute. 
that gives you just about any information and it does it in color so it's not boring to look at. Just, I, I absolutely love the space in here. If you have a passenger up here, everybody's gonna get their own compartment, their own room. The steering wheel is a leather wrapped steering wheel. It has easy to use controls here, including the multi-information display pad. And you can see your digital speed here. Sway warning, that's if you go outside of your lane too much within a specific time. It tells you that, hey, yo, you might wanna take a break. So those are some of the things that it can show you. My steering angle, tire pressure, music, lane departure alert, radar cruise control, if it's time for service or a low tire pressure, and then you can change your lane departure alert settings, or you can change your pre-collision system settings, that kind of stuff. Let's test it here, going back the other way. It actually turns very tight. This is a four wheel drive vehicle. It has the shift lever right here. You can operate it in two wheel drive, which I'm in right now. There's really no need to be in four wheel drive. Four high or four low. It also comes with multi-terrain select and also crawl control. This is the crawl. This is the multi-terrain select. So you can focus on your steering when you have different obstacles. This is like a low speed cruise control. So it's good for sand and mud and things like that. This is perfect for loose gravel, mud and sand, rock and dirt, moguls and bigger rocks. All right, let's get our impressions here. Of Went through a puddle there and I don't feel any loss of control. The one thing about Forerunner is it's very solid. This is a chunky beast. This is probably the toughest SUV you'll ever run across. And it holds its own extremely well. I don't think you'll have any problem going on remote trails or mountain passes or through uh, mountain streams, things like that, you know, mountain streams, not too deep guys, just like a little, you know, a little bit, have a little bit of fun. Let's see how this does going through this huge puddle here. <laughs> Not too bad at all, guys. Actually, let's go this way. The one thing the Forerunner has is this is not going to be a sports car. It's not a vehicle that's going to get from zero to 60 where you want to know what's the zero to 60 in this thing. It does its job very nicely. It has good low end torque. It will take a little while to get up to your top speed because it's not a sports car. Get something like a Supra or something faster like a, um, gosh, a Camry, something with some zip to it. This is not known for having zip. That's not what it does. Look at that huge front windshield, everyone. I get questions from people who want to know how does Toyota Safety Sense work in the rain. So let's test this out right here. We'll just go outside of our lane and see if lane departure alert works. See that? It doesn't have steering assist, so it doesn't guide you back into your lane, but it certainly alerts you that you've gone outside of your lane. So any type of distracted driving hopefully will be lessened and we can see less chances of accidents because you've crossed your lane mistakenly. Also, let's test out radar cruise control. On the Forerunner, the cruise is down here, so you push it in, and then we'll see how that does for speed. If you notice, it's backing us off from this trailer in front of us. And I've got the cruise that was set for 73, but it's got me backed off to 63 so that I'm in even distance between me and the cars in front of me. Let's change it to a one setting so that will allow us to get a little bit closer and see how the speed does. It moved us up to 66 because we allowed a bigger threshold. So now let's go to three setting. See it's set at 73 and it's got us back down to 57. So let's increase right here our speed by getting into a free lane 
and see if it gets us back up to 73. I hope this isn't a boring example. These are real world scenarios, so I thought they would be important for people to see how it actually does. And if you notice, even though it's set at 73, in certain situations it'll have you at something like 72. So much visibility, everyone. That's awesome for an SUV. Yes siree, 4Runner has a lot of space. It drives great, especially in the rain. I would recommend it highly so far, but let's keep going. Sorry about the shaky camera angle. One thing you always question is, how does the vehicle do on the highway as far as getting pushed around and things like that? I just went next to that semi up there, and I will tell you, I don't feel like the semi's air pushed me around. This car is extremely solid. I mean, when you're talking about a 6,000 pound vehicle, it really holds its own and it's extremely solid. It has a firm foundation. It's a solid body on frame platform. So what that means is the body and the frame are attached to each other. They're bolted down so that it's a very, very, like I said, it's firm. It handles its own going on uh, off-roading and things like that, but it also does great when you're just on regular roads, which most of us are most of the time, just on regular roads like this. And what are my forerunner impressions? I really like the additions of things like standard power driver's seat, eight inch multimedia touchscreen, especially the addition of Toyota Safety Sense. I think those are big. Those are what we call game changers. And it was about time. I think it's a necessary addition and it helps with uh, safety with technology and definitely with convenience and comfort as well But the forerunner I'll tell you it drives so smooth whether you're at the lower speeds like parking lots or city streets or on the highway It's very very smooth And it's very comfortable. I love the seats. Let's give it one last little test here We've got a little bit of marshy area. So let's put that into Four-wheel drive just like that and see how it does in wet, marshy, muddy conditions. Yeah, it's bumpy, but these are the kind of roads that you might be on when you're off-roading. Yeah, that handled it like a champ. Ba-boom, ba-boom. Impressive, most impressive. If you like, we can show off some of the specs in the car. It's made in Japan. It's 4x4 TRD off-road. Barcelona Red in the house. There's the safety ratings. The fuel mileage, this one here is up to 19 on the highway. See, it operates with a 4.0 liter V6 engine and it gives you 270 horsepower, 278 foot-pounds of torque. It has locking rear differential, multi-terrain select, crawl control. The Audio Plus, there's no charge for the getting that one. It's included in the sticker price. Um, to deliver it is $1,120. This one has a few options on it. It's got the step bars added to it. It's got some paint protection, all weather cargo mat, and a phone and cable charging package. Yes, I saw that was $73. And then this one will be about $42,000. Thank you guys so much for watching. What did you think of the 4Runner? What were the things that stood out to you? What did you like? What did you not like? We'll use that for future content. So please follow my column at torquenews.com slash Toyota. I'm probably going to be writing about 4Runner in the rain. Holla! Also, subscribe. You can hit me up on Facebook at Toyota Jeff. You can hit me up on Instagram. You'll like it. At Toyota Jeff 1. At Toyota Jeff 1. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate all you do for me. I'll continue to try doing what I do for you. See you next time.